Yes, he is here, uh, as a matter of fact, and the fellas are in studio for the Shopo Hour, and we're going to jump in with all six feet that are in our studio. Okay, the Shopo Hour is here, and it is the triumphant return after having finally completed uh, the sensitivity training that was bestowed upon him. It was a, what, 17-month program that you were on to be more sensitive in regard to yourself and the general public. Brother Steve Keogh is back in studio. Good morning. Rick, good morning, brother. Always happy and grateful to be here with you and your listeners. I want to know, I passed with a C-. minus. C-. C-. minus. Wow. In sensitivity training, I got a C-. minus. So did you get the answers ahead of time to achieve a C-? minus? I did whatever I could to make it through the course. But I wondered how you were going to kind of tie this in and what kind of intro you're going to give. So Yeah. Well, I just made it up. Yeah. No, I tell you. <laughs> no, great to be here with you, brother. Great it's to good to see. How long has it been? It's been a good month at least. Yeah, it could be about six weeks. A Rick. little longer. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to be back. And can you update us what with your new assignment and all that that's uh, transpired? Yeah, sure, Rick. So uh, back on May 17th, I, I got uh, promoted up to the rank of lieutenant. Uh, because of that promotion, I took a new assignment out in Pearl City, mm-hmm. helping with uh, daytime patrol operations out there. So my work schedule is 6 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., and I didn't have the flexibility to take leave to, to come in and do the show. Sure. One thing that's unique about what we do is is union leadership is we have to wear two hats. We have to do our union positions, and then we also have to have responsibilities with the police departments we work for mm-hmm. within the different counties. Right. So I just wasn't able to, to get back here, but... You're going to be stuck with me for the next uh, couple months, I think, here, Rick. Oh, I'm going on vacation starting tomorrow <laughs> for three years. Ah, oh, shocks. Just did. No, it's good to have you back, brother. No, great to be here. Thanks again, Rick. And Brother Nick, good morning to you. No, oh, yes. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. By the way, I still want to commend you and thank you for last week. Uh, you were flying solo and did an excellent job of uh, keeping us up to speed. That was oh, awesome. Thank you. That's nice of you to say. Yeah, very nice indeed. Brother Mike. Oh, my. Oh, my. The triumphant return as well. Good morning. Good morning, Rick. Awesome to be here. I, I'm glad I got the, the call from Steve, mm-hmm. um, you know, yesterday. In fact, I, he, I got a call last week, Sunday, to try and see if we, I, I could make it with uh, Nick, but mm-hmm. kind of clashed with my shopo duty, so I wasn't able to make it. But yeah. glad to be here today. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm, I'm here. I w- I'd like to wish all of your your mom listeners out there a you know, happy Mother's Day, especially uh, you know to my wife and the significant others of my two partners in the studio today. So mm-hmm. happy Mother's Day! I was going to really walk through that door, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to shut it before I do. Sure, we made yeah no, but sentiments excellent, absolutely, and it was a celebratory day for uh, yes. for a lot of folks and. Yeah. Uh, very important indeed. The biggest question, of course, is did Steve exercise sensitivity when he made the invitation to appear? Yes, he did. Good. Good. <clears throat> and I was very impressed. It, was it C minus quality? I, I thought he was like A plus <laughs> plus. Ah, you know? There we have. He must have caught like, me on a good I, day. I he must so. have caught me on a I good think day. So. <laughs> Love the fact the brothers are in studio and we're already at 714. Want to cover some ground? And that. First off, top of mind, uh, Police Week. Uh, it was a declaration, I think it was by John President Kennedy, and stated that Police Week would be recognized when May 15th fell within that week. Nick, is that about right? Yes, that's correct. 1962, I think, is yeah. when the declaration was made. And we here at home, uh, we have events and commemorations, etc. cetera. Um, Who'd like to walk us through a little bit, first of all, your thoughts about Police Week and our focus on our officers, but today is a very, very special day indeed. When, when I was in, I love Police Week because it, it recognizes a lot of our officers that have uh, given up the ultimate sacrifice, and they are remembered through vigils uh, during that week, and also it is to recognize excellence for some of our officers that are being nominated and our units that are being nominated Mm -hmm. for, you know, unit of the quarter, uh, police officer of the year, supervisor of the year, parent of the year. Um, It 
it's just to me personally I loved it because it just you know enhanced and showed society that you know what we need our officers to be recognized during this week especially the ones that we've lost mm -hmm. you know uh, protecting the community and the island that we serve right. so um, I was involved with it you know several times one of my officers that I nominated for police officer of the year officer Jeff Legner um, he was uh, nominated by me for his excellent work so you know to be a part of that is just um, nothing can compare yeah thank you for that very much because there are multiple occasions where the general public can participate uh, today 6 p.m. the main station uh, on Baratania Alapai will be a commemorative walk that will begin and then will arrive at the State Capitol building. Uh, Nick, can you walk us through from there? Yes, so uh, typically the department uh, kind of musters at uh, Sister Roberta, Roberta Derby Park, which is at the station. Uh, we walk down Baratania Street to the State Capitol in mass. Um, dignitaries and VIPs are allowed to uh, join us. And um, once we get to the State Capitol, we hold a candlelight vigil for all of the fallen officers uh, in the home of the police department. That will take place at the State Capitol building. At 6.30. At 6.30. Steve, what are your thoughts about the events? So, yeah, just, just uh, for your listeners, uh, in addition to there being memorials and commemorative things done here locally in Honolulu, uh, there's a big event that happens in Washington uh, every year. It's, it's uh, National Police Week, and uh, it's from May 12th to the 18th. And in 2023, our profession lost 137 officers. Mm. 137, unfortunately, uh, uh, in the line of duty, doing what they do. Uh, here in Honolulu, we, we lost Officer Bill Sapolu last year. So uh, Chief Joe and the Sapolu family are heading to the services that are taking place in Washington, and he's going to be there with them mm -hmm. while basically Bill is, is inducted and, and memorialized uh, at right. that event. Yeah, I had a chance to chat with Chief mm. upon his yeah. departure, and it's a very sobering moment for all of us. And I hope that during the time that the general public will take a moment and participate, come down to the Capitol tonight. I believe, is it Wednesday? Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. At Kahala Mall today at 11 a.m., there's going to be the announcement with Mayor Rick and others. You can attend that, right, Nick? You can attend virtually all of these. Yes, today's uh, Mayor's <clears throat> Park Proclamation is a, is a public event as well. Yeah. yeah. And then Wednesday, it's the uh, ceremony to recognize excellence, as Brother Mike had, had mentioned. Public can attend that as well. Attend and go to the main station. Enjoy the museum that is located at the entrance to HPD. That museum, I think it's one of the underreported treasures in, in this community. And I really urge uh, folks to, to visit and enjoy. Yeah. Uh, it is already 7.19 in the morning. We'll go ahead and revisit this to remind folks uh, as we continue the Shopo Hour. My goodness gracious. I got some stuff. Yeah, you do. I got some stuff. Yeah, you do. I also want to open up the phone lines, 521-8383. Recent town hall meetings, and we've had a chance to chat, and that is about safety, the expression of the community, concern about level of violence. Mayor had a town hall a couple of weeks ago, kind of made some statements that caught the attention of a lot, but there was feedback from local leaders that Neighborhood Watch and others uh, lamenting that, listen, we got to get this together. Unfortunately, another incident. And I, d I don't recall if this was overnight during the day yesterday, but unfortunately a life lost in a stabbing in Waianae side. Um, I just want to get your take on the community at large and what's percolating there uh, for residents and others. Mike, you want to take it? Um, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's another unfortunate black guy for the whole entire you know community because of the level of violence that's going on 
you know, in Y and I, it's, it's it's very unfortunate. And you know, we woke up. I woke up Sunday morning, yesterday morning, finding out that there was an individual that got stabbed at one of our, you know, more popular parks. And it was about maybe two o'clock in the morning. Mm. But it's it's Pililao Park. It's a recreational park that we have. You know, a lot of our kids, football games, baseball games. You know, families go down there during the evening time to. You know, hang out, play volleyball, kids ride roller skates, play basketball. And this unfortunate incident had happened. And it's, it's you know, I don't, cause the, because the investigation is still ongoing, um, one of the things that everybody's alluding to is that the, there's been a huge um, impact with the homeless situation out there. And it's not to say that, you know, they were involved, but... Our park law specifically says that you're not supposed to be in any city and county park after 10 p.m., you know? Yep. Um, unfortunately, um, these individuals, I wouldn't say they're allowed to stay, but they're there. And, um, you know, it's just another situation where, you know, Saturday night, I don't know what's going on, but uh, this unfortunate incident had happened. And again, the the community is just kind of scratching their head, like you know, what are we going to do about this? So, a lot of questions the uh, mayor has to answer. But I, I think what needs to to happen, and again, I'm not I'm not saying that it was, you know, the uh, residentially challenged uh, people that were out there, but the homeless situation has become so bad out in the Waianae area that, you know, a lot of the residents there are afraid to go to the beach parks, they're afraid to um, hang out with their families because of the homeless situation. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's bad. If you go on the, the whole entire Waianae Coast from Nanakuli all the way uh, to Waianae Town itself, it's, there's just an overabundance of homeless people, and that needs to be addressed. So um, I had some some ideas that we were trying to uh, push through when Caldwell was the mayor, but that got shut down. So, you know, unless um, somebody has any new ideas as far as how to tackle that situation, you know, the community is all ears, but right now nobody's got an answer. So um, it's not only the politicians that need to get together, but anytime there's a situation with a homeless person that create, get that ends up, uh, committing a crime, even the prosecutor's office, even the judges, these people need to be held accountable. If they're if they're just being, their their cases are being dumped just because they're homeless, then there's no discipline for these people to not create these problems again. You know, and so, you know, it, it's not only HPD, it's not only the politicians, not only the community leaders, but everybody's got to be involved with this. Prosecutors, the judges who make the decision to dump some of these cases, everybody needs to get together to try and create a situation okay. that, you know, everybody can get behind. <clears throat> I've been laborious in needing a solution. This is dec- This is not just today. Yes. Olive Park was a Hooverville mm-hmm. when I first started. Look at Chinatown. And so the lamentations of like, well, we need to get something done. Well, hell, do it. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, though, is that we're a rule, we follow rules of law, and the adjudication of issues are in our courts where there is a recent decision that would empower, but then negated. And so our court system is really a focus of exactly what can you do. There is a non-criminalization of homelessness, and that's the umbrella. And I'm telling you now, the ACU is the biggest barricade to forward movement on our homeless issue, in my opinion, because you can have any policy drafted by the state or by the city, but as soon as it gets challenged in court, we all know that ah, frustrating process, but it is the process under which we operate. Well, that's why any idea that comes up, the ACLU needs to be a part of that, because if we create an idea and we start to, to... you know, go ahead and, and try to accomplish that idea, but we didn't go run it past ACLU, then that's oh. actually on us. 
they they need to be involved only because we don't want to come up to this situation where we're looking at at least some success and then ACLU comes in and says, oh, hey, hold on, you guys are violating the constitutional right. So from the get-go, any idea that you come up with with regards to the home, they need to be involved in that. The, but they won't. <clears throat> well, the, the outreach has happened Everybody's got to come over together. And over. Well, then yep. I, I would maintain then the damn ACLU, put down your ideological BS and help this community yes. because you're a barricade yes. to improving what we find. So real quick, when, when I was the, the community police sergeant in District 8 before I retired, um, one of the ideas that I came up with is, you know, we have to accept the fact that we're not going to beat homelessness. It is what it is. Economy is bad. People are going to be losing their homes. But what we can do is we can try and control it somehow. So one of the ideas that we came up with was, if you want to be homeless, because we, we have beds, Catholic Charities, IHS, they have beds that these individuals oh. can have, but they don't want to go there because of the rules that they have. Yeah, they got to to get up. Well, un un unfortunately, what happens is that's why they don't want to go, right? So they want to go ahead and <clears throat> live the way they want to live. So at some point, everybody has to take a look at that and accept the fact that there's just some people that just want to go ahead and be that way. So one of the ideas we came up with is, why don't we pick a location in y and I mm -hmm. and say, if you want to be homeless, this is where you need to be homeless at. You cannot just pop your tent and just go ahead and put it up wherever you damn well please, and we have to accept that. <clears throat> but the idea that we have was we picked a location, we had all the support from the leaders, yeah. and it got, it got shot down. <clears throat> Unfortunately... Um, since that time, you know, everybody's left to, okay, what in the world is going on? I know this is a continuing discussion. I want to bring uh, two more voices in on this. Steve, your thoughts. <clears throat> well, I'm definitely empathetic to those that live on the west side. It sure does seem lately that the Waianae Coast has had their shares of pretty serious criminal stuff go down. Yeah. And that affects, th that affects, perception is key, right? And I think that, and Mike brought up some really good points. When you when you initially hear this, the first thing that I think some people do, and maybe rightfully so, is well, what are the police doing about it? Right? What are the police doing about it? Could HPD do a little bit more? Perhaps. But again, HPD has eight patrol districts. They have criminal investigations. They're, we're running a large organization at a 20% staffing deficit. I'm not making an excuse. Mike makes great points about bringing in other players. But the perception right now, I feel completely candid is that Waianae Coast in that area is not as safe as maybe it could be. Now, whether it's criminal players that do criminal stuff or it's homeless people that are out of their minds and do criminal stuff, the main thing is we've heard a lot about that coast, and I'm, I'm empathetic. Again, it doesn't help us as a law enforcement organization that we build a station uh, a decade ago, and we build it, and we don't staff it. Now, there's reasons for that. Again, 20% staffing uh, shortage, but it didn't help, I think, that we showed that we wanted to have a substantial police presence with that station, and then uh, right now it, it's not able to get filled. And I'm not poking HPD. I'm just making a statement, right? You build a, you build a station there. The community is probably expecting that there's going to be a robust police presence. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet. Um, but it's going to take partners from everywhere it's not it's not just police i am not as empathetic and tolerant of homeless i'm over it in fact i'm going to segue if you'll let me give me two minutes of course i've been out in pearl city i came from urban honolulu d1 mm. which is probably the mecca of nonsense for homeless people chinatown the parks what whatever i cannot begin to tell you the amount of tax dollar resources that EMS, fire, and police need to use to do responses to issues that the homeless cause. Mm. Let me repeat that. Mm. In Pearl City, we do not get nearly as many calls regarding homeless-related stuff, whether it's petty theft, whether it's medical calls for service. In urban Honolulu, you have officers that are going with paramedics on every single case regarding homeless. We are spending an obscene amount of money and using a lot of resources, I'm going to say it, to cater mm -hmm. to those people that are substance abusers, mentally ill, 
and cannot make decisions for themselves. So why in this community we continually give these individuals choices? We're beyond choices. Because ultimately, the people that pay the taxes, the people that do the right thing, the people that want a high quality of life, the people that play the game correctly, right? I'm not tolerant of that anymore. You, you, and then these sweeps, don't, Rick, I, um, I'm, I love your passion on this topic because we have to come together as a community and just make a decision. How do we want to live? How do we want to move forward? Because I actually think we're losing ground. I don't think we're gaining. That's a, that's a, that's a, I see more and more people on the streets. Now, I'm not pointing fingers, but that's just a reality. Would you agree? Well, I'll agree, definitely. Yep. And the one aspect is that homelessness is often invoked that it's the economy. I maintain it's not. It's the people that have decide, decided themselves, unless they were tied down spread eagle and had a syringe jammed in their vein to get hooked on drugs. They chose to use, and they were unable to control the use and the effect of drugs on their system. They're addicted. They cannot function. And then, on top of that, you're right, mentally ill folks. No one is casting them and throwing them under a bus. Yes, if you need help, accept the help. And if you don't accept the help, mandate that the help is before you. It is a violation of those. Quick story. Um, Of those who follow the law, who are law-abiding, that want to go to a beach yes. and want to have safety and security without the element that promotes unsafe and insecurity. Yes. So, real, real quick story, but um, when, when I took over as the uh, community police sergeant in, in District 8, um, I did a ride-along. I invited a lot of the politicians from down that side to come down and see, you know, what what really truly is going on. I even had Augie Tauba came out one night. But anyway, we went out uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, early Saturday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning. We went out. Um, we had about 12 of them came out, you know, Cedric Gates, um, uh, representatives from um, other politicians that, that couldn't make it. But they all came out. And we took them to an area that we call sewers, which is directly across the street from the sewage plant in Waianae. Because I wanted them to see that, we got kids over here. Yeah, it's like 60 degrees, but they're sleeping on cars, abandoned cars. And it's an unfortunate situation that this is your constituents. This is who you represent. So what are we going to do about it? So, you know, they went there. You know, a lot of them just started, you know, getting emotional because they're seeing these kids on cars. And it's an unfortunate situation. And so they're telling us, you know, HPD, you know, what? why don't you guys call Child Welfare Services and whatnot? I said, well... Is Child Welfare Services going to uh, bring these kids back to Waianae Monday morning and have them go to school? A lot of these kids, they go across the street to catch the school bus. So it's a choice of two evils that the family's got to work with right now. Yeah. But it, it's it's mental illness plays into that. We got the Waianae Coast Comprehensive up there, and we got homeless people all the time that have mental problems. I'll tell you, what, there's a lot on this, and we're behind on our break. But, Mike, thank you for that. We'll turn to Nick when we return, and your calls at 521-8383. It is the Shopo Hour. Welcome back. The Shopo Hour continues with brothers in studio, Brother Nick, Brother Steve, Brother Mike. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Nick to kind of put a bow on our conversation, which has forayed mostly into homelessness, but... I want to get your take uh, on the discussion, Nick. Sure. So, um, you know, judging by the banter that you've just heard, obviously, um, there's a lot of frustration on this topic, uh, not just from the people that live out in in the West Side, but also from the officers in the department who, for years and years and years, have just been tasked with the responsibility of of pushing this issue a little further down the block every day. Um, When I first started in the department, um, I think in the Kalihi area, the homeless issue wasn't as bad. It definitely grew in the 10 years that I worked there. When I went over to Macaulay Moili Ili, I could see a, a neighborhood that I used to actually live in for a large measure of time um, that I had left. Um, the homeless problem just grew exponentially there as well. Um, from the officer's point of view, I think, just for lack of a better word, we're so over just responding and trying to deal with it and triage it right there. Um, And with our staffing issues, um, it just gets harder and harder for us to be able to to triage it. 
So the time for acknowledging the problem is over. It's been over for action. many, many years. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're, we're at the point of action and, yep. and things need to be done. We can all agree that it's not illegal to be homeless. I don't have a problem with that. I think we can all agree that it's very easy to accept homelessness when it's not in your backyard and it's not affecting your life on a daily basis, i.e. if you're somebody who's entitled enough to not have to worry about it, you can be an advocate and it's easy to do. But when it's not affecting your life right then and there, that that's easy. But when it is, for those of us on the ground, totally different story. Just to cap it, the uh, point in time count for this year has yet to be released. I have not seen. And we're already in May. Point in time is January, I believe. Uh, regardless, it's been several months. The estimate still remains identified at approximately 4,000 individuals that were counted and tagged and written document and probably more even if there was 50 percent more we're talking about six thousand individuals who are chronically homeless in a community of a million those four to six thousand are dictating yes. dictating yes to the rem- to the entire community you can't come here we're here we're going to do this and if you come near you even approach you say anything about Man, you're going to be, and that type of encounter, unfortunately, is happening every day. I live downtown. Mm -hmm. I encountered all that stuff, Fort Street Mall, right Mm -hmm. by the cathedral, in front of a church. And you get these ruffians, not the the economy, they're strung out, they're looking to roll somebody, and you better be prepared and you better be aware. What kind of environment is that to live? To the point, I wouldn't let the kids, when they were younger, wouldn't let them go down. Wouldn't let them walk anywhere unless I was with them because that's how profound it is. What is that all about? We had people from Minnesota. We had people from St. Louis that were given tickets from their residents to come. Oh, you guys want to go to Hawaii? There you go. Here's your ticket. They come to Hawaii to be home. In this circle's back, Rick, of is there an opinion that when people are homeless that it causes more crime? I would I would say the answer is yes. Because mm-hmm. we circle back, right? This all started yep. about the West West Side and, and increase in, in violent crime, and then it might tie to homelessness. And the question is, when people live in those kind of conditions, does it create more crime? And I think yeah. the answer is yes. Amen. It is uh, 7.43 in the morning. Uh, by the way, the NFL schedule is coming out on Wednesday. That's the lead story, boys. Wednesday, we'll find out exactly uh, which teams the Bears will defeat in the upcoming. And that won't be a long conversation. Well, I'm you afraid. got a new quarterback, right? Uh, you got, uh, you know, uh, Caleb, Caleb Williams. Is, yeah, that's, we got him. Guy now. And then um, the Steelers, which is my team, they got Russell Wilson. And they've got Justin Fields yeah, coming yeah. over, you know, so yeah. I'm looking good, man. Well, Hopefully my Steelers can make a run this year. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the key is Toblin. He's he, he's going to get his mojo back. He never lost yeah. it. But he's going he's gonna to bring Russell Wilson back a lot better than mm-hmm. Sean Payton did. Sean so. just stepped on his neck the whole time in Denver. Yeah. Anyway, see, we're very flexible on this program. The show post sports hour is underway. Uh, There is going to be a court hearing today there uh, uh, in regard to haiku stairs, stairway to heaven. Judge will render a decision, but as of right now, the deconstruction is taking place. However, there is also violations taking place. So, so like like we brought up, right? Like like you know, Nick brought up. Like if you're not in the community where these situations are happening then you don't fully understand what these residents are going through. Um, when I was in the department, Board of Water Supply, they own all that area, right, in the back where where um, the Stairwood Heaven yeah. is, right? So the the residents in Haiku was getting so frustrated with people trespassing on there. They would have Uber drivers, Lyft drivers. They would even have tour drivers dropping these people off in the residence, in the residential areas, just so that they can trespass on some of these people's property and go to the Sailor to Heaven. Simple idea for me was obviously they're trying to find a vendor that wants to go ahead and make it a, an attraction or whatever, but you want to stop this. 
How's about going up 300 feet, cut the stairs, bring it down, nobody can go on the stairs. And then you can, if you want to go ahead and, and uh, weld it back, fine. But you want to stop these people from coming up? Cut the damn stairs. Cut it. Just cut the whole thing. So that they don't, they, they, there's no reason for them to do that because what they want to do, they want to go illegally climb all up to the top so they can post some videos on social media. That's it. But yeah, these people that live there are frustrated with this whole entire situation. Well documented that that <clears throat> has well. been the occasion. Yes. But it's the staving off of people. And here's probably a more general commentary. What the hell's wrong with people? <laughs> what the, Who are the morons that violate law on purpose, obviously impacting others? Is, are people that bloody selfish? It's screw you because I need this and I want that. Is that just how our community mm-hmm. is, Steve? Unfortunately. In if, when it comes to those stairs, if I'm understanding it correctly, there are people that actually have to walk through the backyards of homeowners yep. that, that live there. So you have a constant flow of people walking through your backyard. And to your point, Rick, if these individuals don't seem to respect the fact that they're walking through somebody's home, mm-hmm. then it wouldn't be f- so far-fetched to think that they're going to leave their garbage behind. It wouldn't be so far-fetched uh, to think that they're going to park where they shouldn't park. So to Mike's point, uh, the people that live in that community are probably fed up, but then you might have others that don't live in the community that say, oh, we should keep it, or let's let's do something to bring it up. Who knows? You know, whatever the, the back end. But uh, we, again... Luckily, HFD has talented people because how many people have gotten hurt up there? How many rescues have had to get done? Again, it, it uh, and then on the violation side, if people are criminally cited for doing what they're not supposed to, what's the consequence? I'm not sure. I don't know what that is, but clearly this has been going on for a long time, so it's probably a good thing that certain things are getting addressed. Yeah. 747, Nick. Haiku stairs is not the only place on the on the island where um, people uh, trespass um, in order to egress or or, or get into um, and leave uh, a hiking trail. Um, there's a lot of others; they just aren't as well documented. This is the most notorious one. Hmm. Um, the department, uh, for years, has tried its best to curtail that, but it's not from an on-duty enforcement type of situation. It's all been, uh, if I'm not mistaken, special duty. Yep. Um, where officers are posted there um, for overtime, um, a couple of officers, and they do their best to try and handle the parking situations and the citations. But with two officers and that that many people coming in, it's extremely difficult to, difficult to control. Um, from my point of view as an individual um, citizen, uh, my concern is uh, how much our resources or how, how much of our resources are being spent to, to get these people out when they get in trouble. Um, I do think as a, as a citizen that um, the bills in the legislature regarding charging people for being rescued are more than fair. Mm-hmm. Um, those ideas have been around for many, many years, and it surprises me that the legislature hasn't passed them because it, it, it seems fair to me. Uh, you know, if, if, if it's, it's an at-risk type of situation, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's, everybody knows you're not supposed to be there. The signs are posted. Um, you should know whether or not you're physically capable mm-hmm. of doing these kinds of things. And uh, if you get in trouble, uh, yes, we'll, we'll come and get you. But at the same time, you know, you, you kind of put this upon yourself. Um, from a patrol officer's standpoint, um, I have been on co-responses with the fire department and EMS where a hiker gets uh, lost or a hiker uh, gets uh, stranded and uh, needs to be uh, removed mm-hmm. either by HFD hiking in or um, HFD using a helicopter to go in and actually pull somebody out. And I'll tell you, um, you might think that's only an HFD exclusive operation. It's not. Um, we get called to all of them and we have to show up and we have to make an assessment. And often two officers have to go and often a supervisor has to go down as well. And that draws our resources away from our field operations and our ability to respond to other priority 911 calls. So if you were being assaulted, um, we may not be able to get somebody to you that quickly because we may be working on trying to get out a couple of hikers who decided to yeah. illegally hike and just got in their own demise. 
Uh, this session, a bill to do exactly that, is to fine for the cost of rescue for illegal hikers die. And the bill went all the way through in conference. So it there was a lot of attention, but they didn't pull the trigger on this. And it just doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. because that would be another element to perhaps mitigate people violating. Uh, we're at 7.50 in the morning. This time is flying by. It is the Shopo Hour. It's the Shopo Hour on News Radio 830 KHVH. Welcome back. It, just about five minutes remaining. I want to congratulate and thank HPD for the arrest of that Cretan uh, who attacked uh, a Kapuna on a city bus. And it was on videotape and it was part of the news. And within a very short amount of time, the arrest was made. Disposition of this character, I don't know what it might be. But thank you, because that just, ins it's, it incenses everyone. And thank you for snagging this guy. Well, I think if he was in New York City, he'd probably be out already because there's no ca there's a cashless bail now. But um, at least there's some sanity over here in, in this state that people need to be held accountable for what they do. Especially, you, know, you, you assault a kupuna is like assaulting a little child, and that is not, that is not right. So this guy should should take some cracks for what he did. Uh, can I sign up for that? Yes, uh, yes. It, is it a lottery? Do I <laughs> take a number? Uh, but it's just that nonsensical yeah. that permeates. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, I want to tag out with events that are taking place. We started with Police Week. Uh, Brother Nick, would you mind walking us through what's taking place today? So uh, today at 6 p.m. again, uh, starting at the HPD main station on Baratania Street, um, the department and uh, guests will be walking from the station to the state capitol in memorial of fallen officers here on the island of uh, Oahu. And then at 6.30 p.m., the candlelight vigil starts. Wonderful. General public invited. Yes, yes, absolutely. Brother Steve, I know there is a proclamation at 10 a.m. today, at 11 a.m. today at Kahala Mall uh, with Mayor Rick. But on Wednesday, could you walk us through the ceremonial events? Um, Nick, what do we have for Wednesday? Wednesday will be the uh, um, annual Police Week uh, recognition for officers of the year. Uh, and, and every year, officers get nominated within the department uh, for this award. So um, there are several, uh, like Mike said, Officer of the Year, Sergeant of the Year, Detective of the Year. I believe there's a Parent of, a the, parent year. of the Year yeah. as well. Yeah. Again, general public invited, Steve. Yeah, no, sorry, Rick. I apologize. When you hit me with that question, yeah. I just want to throw something just real quick. This Saturday, May 18th, there's going to be yes. an informational uh, get-together for those. The cops in the street can't do their job without dispatchers. Amen. And uh, there is going to be, if you go to joinhonolulupd.org, there's going to be informative uh, 1030 a.m. this Saturday if maybe people want to serve, be a part of the department through working in the communications department. Mm -hmm. So police communications officer, a.k.a. dispatchers, there's going to be an informational meeting this Saturday, 1030, at the Joint Traffic Management Center. Uh, you can register ahead of time. I apologize. That's where my brain was no, when please. you hit me with that. I just wanted to make sure that we, we put that out there. Uh, they're a big part of what we do. We can't do what we do without them, and they're short as well, and they're looking for good people. I know it's been top of mind in the news because of the incident in Waikiki, a gentleman that was accosted in the call, and, and Brother Nick and I, and thank you for walking us through with more detail last week because it was a centerpiece of the discussion. But amen to that and more. And do pursue. There are so many opportunities that you can contribute but still earn a very good living by being a part of HPD. So log on, as Steve mentioned, and let's learn more. Uh, Brother Mike, thank you so much for being with us. So awesome to be here. Thanks, Steve, for, for inviting me. In a I very sen it. sensitive way. Yeah, in a C minus, yeah, in yeah. a C minus yeah. kind of way. Well, he gave you double A's. I, yeah, you know. no, I'm sure, no, double A plus plus. <laughs> yeah.
And I, I don't know where you can find those batteries, but evidently they... <laughs> Brother Steve, it's good to have you back. Rick, I was happy to be here. Always grateful. Thank you so much. And Brother Nick, as always, thank you. Yes, thank you. And my apologies to Steve. It took me several weeks to get the answers to the sensitivity test. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I just don't make that much money. That's all right. (laughs) Professor Sensitivity. Uh, Brother Nick. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for the Show Po Hour here on KHVH Honolulu. 